Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, I, I sort of have a little problem here. Uh, I was asked not to brag about the laser and just talk about science, but now that I've been, we brought up Pink Floyd, that makes it hard. I also want to say that if you do Google me, you'll find out I'm a great swimmer. I'm a, Ed, that's another Ed Moses. I'm a great uh, sprint star. You know, the hurdles, if you remember, that's Edwin Moses. And when it was in the New York Times, when you click those, it was every Ed Moses on earth, as far as I can tell, besides this one. So anyway, let me get going about into this talk, and we'll see since this talk is now 30 seconds old. What I'm going to talk to you about is, is the, bo the, both the NIF and what we're going to use it for. And uh, the real question that came up when we started this is, could we build a miniature sun on the Earth? And uh, the, the, when we talk about miniature, we talk about something that's pretty small. We'll talk about a, when it's burning, it's about 100 microns in diameter. And uh, it's kind of unusual conditions. And it, we really do now uh, think that it's likely. The NIF, which has been a long journey, you know, we're coming up to the 50th anniversary of the invention of the laser, Ted Maiman's uh, demonstration to use aircraft, um, you know, sort of set off this whole journey, uh, literally days later in a very classified program that was at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory that fortunately became unclassified in the 70s because other people started thinking about it also. But we think we now have sort of a fifth generation of laser that I'll be talking about that can do this. And this is what it sort of looks like. It's kind of a big system. I normally show uh, football fields or soccer pitches on top of it. Um, I'm trying to get out of that. Uh, I'm comparing it to Walmarts or IKEA. It's about a Walmart, you know, size. It's a little bit more expensive than the, but actually I've never kept, looked at the inventory that's in Walmart, so I don't know. This is the largest scientific construction project completed by the Department of Energy, maybe largest period, we don't know for sure, but it is now fully operational and it was formally accepted as operational in March. We're kind of very proud of that. It's one of the, for this group, I just think another point of view, it's the largest and most complex optical system ever built. You know, it has 192 laser beams in the infrared, they're around 20 kilojoules each, and the ultraviolet, they're around 10 kilojoules each. The power in the long pulse regime uh, in the ultraviolet is 500 terawatts. Long pulse for us is tens and 10 nanoseconds. In the short pulse regime, it will have over 10 kilojoules picosecond pulses. Uh, it has 8,000 large optics, which are meter sized, and 30,000 small optics, generally under 20 center, centimeters, 60,000 control points. And uh, if you look at it, if you cover the area of this facility, which is again three football fields with optics, it, they're about the same area. Um, when, I, when you heard about it, there's the 192 beams. If you cut a cross section through that facility, this is how it looks, and each beam is around 35 centimeters square. They're kind of close packed, and when we operated them uh, together, we had over 1.1 megajoules UV on target, which is an interesting number. People ask why it's this many beams, why it's uh, this much energy. It's, a, it's the first laser that was designed for the exact purpose of getting burned. Other missions also I'll describe. And the general feeling was it was around a one and a half megajoule laser that could do it. You had to have uh, symmetries on the target, which I'll show you that required a lot of beams. Uh, by the way, I want you to know that this laser is being operated at around eight joules per square centimeter in the ultraviolet, which is about 10 times higher than any other laser. So we've done a lot of work on damage too. If you took the roof off, this is what it looks like. That's the master oscillator. It's about a nanojoule. You go out through the system, and it's about a microsecond flight, and it has a gain of uh, 10 to the 15th overall. It goes 2D, 3D. It's ultraviolet at that point. And then you get the target, which I'll show you, and it puts out those yellow neutrons. And um, that is the goal of how it works. This has kind of been an exciting, challenging journey, and hasn't always been straightforward. Um, you know, it started in 1994. When you get into these kind of projects, you sort of get into it for the long haul. I actually didn't get into it until 99. Uh, but, you know, there was groundbreaking in 97. You know, it was, it's been a 24 hour seven um, all the time to first order through construction. This is what it looks like right now, and you're all invited to see it sometime if you can when you're on the 
on the West Coast in the Bay Area, please let us know in advance so we could give you a tour. I think you'll find it quite exciting. This is how a laser bay looks like when it's being built. It's around 120 meters long. And this is what the laser bay looks like when it's finished. And each one of those square boxes uh, give you the scale of each laser beam. Um, depending on where you are, you're either propagating in clean, dry air or vacuum or argon. Um, the argon is to suppress uh, <coughs> rotational Raman in air. And, and, uh, and this is how a cluster or, or 48 beams look like. You can see they're four high. This is what a switch yard looks like. Again, it's, it's construction on one side, but I want you to know that the construction here was kind of different in the sense that most things had to be put in place to within around 200 microns, which really required a lot of development of construction techniques. Here's that switch yard where the beams are traveling in those ducts that are filled with argon on the way to the target chamber. Here's what a target bay looks like when you're in construction. And this is a target chamber. You can see it's around 10 meters in diameter. The square patches are where the lasers go in. The round ones are generally for diagnostics. When we start this, there'll be 32 sets of diagnostics on it. Um, ranging from visible UV, ultraviolet, UV infrared, uh, X-ray, and neutron diagnostics. When we start, probably going up to around 100 of them over time. Um, this is a target chamber in place. You can see the humans in the mid-level on the left, and you can see where the beams are coming in from the top and the bottom, and you can also uh, see some diagnostic ports off of it doesn't actually look like this because we use the miracles of Photoshop to take out the floors. So this is actually four pictures. But this gives, gives you the idea of how this looks. It's, uh, it's 10 meters in diameter. It's kind of, also kind of interesting. When I first got to NIF, I was a little bit late into the game. And uh, you know, I was looking at the scale of it, and I, you sort of realize very quickly it's a very simple optical system you know, on a ray, uh, ray tracing mode, and it's sort of, the F numbers of everything sort of work out. Then you get into the difficulties of doing that. This is what a target chamber looks like, and that arm sticking out is what holds the target. And just to scale this, that's a target, and I always like to look at this target. We have that huge building, and because of the wonders of photons, especially laser photons, we can put a lot of energy in a very short time into a very small target. And that's why we can get conditions of hundreds of millions of degrees, uh, billions, tens of billions of atmospheres, and densities of a thousand times that of water, or a hundred times that of lead in that target for very short times. That is the science of NIF, high energy density science. It's different than high energy science, um, high energy physics. This is what is actually going on in our universe. When you look up at the sky during the day and look at the sun, it's a fusion-powered system. When you look up at the sky at night, what you see is stars burning galaxies. Those are all fusion-powered systems. That's our one, that is one of our goals, but it's more than that, as I'll talk about. Understanding our planetary systems and the new, the new planets we're, dis we're dis discovering all over our galaxy can be simulated in this facility at high, with high fidelity. This is the target, again, inside the target chamber. Um, it's, one, it's a one gram target. It's a 1,000 uh, kilogram uh, target holder. You know, only Livermore engineers could do that, but I'll tell you why. They have to hold it in place to around 10 microns, and it also has to be near absolute zero, about 17 and 18 and a half degrees because this is frozen uh, DT that's in that target. 